Hello students and welcome back to class. Before we start, I just want to mention that I made a few changes to chapter 3 of the book. So if you downloaded my book very early on, then I would suggest you download chapter 3 again because some of the values that I'm going to show today might not match the ones shown in the book. The earlier version of the book had a few mistakes that I have since corrected. So make sure you download chapter 3 again for the correct numbers. Today, we're going to conclude our discussion on chapter 3 with a very simple and short topic. It's a bit on the mathematical side, but out of all the mathematical topics we'll be discussing in this series, card skill activation rate is probably the simplest one to understand. However, the problem with verifying our results when doing card skill activation rate calculations is that there isn't any kind of quantitative measure we can just look at the game and confirm our math with. For voltage and damage calculations, calculations, we can just look at the numbers. But for skill activation rate, we have to do anecdotal testing based on a large sample size, and that's the best we can get. Now, I don't have the means or the time to do such a large amount of anecdotal testing, but this particular Japanese blogger actually did the hard work for us, and this section of the book mainly summarizes their findings. If you're interested in reading their research, you can go to this particular website and do a Google Translate if you can't read Japanese. It's rather strange straightforward. They do a lot of anecdotal testing based on different combinations of skill activation rate modifiers. In this lecture, I'll be talking about their findings for the most part. At the start of each section, I'll have a list of variables that we'll be calculating throughout the process. For this section, you can see that there's four different variables that we'll be calculating versus the original skill activation rate, and that is the skill activation rate of the card's skill without any modifiers. As we discussed earlier this chapter, this is based on the rarity of the card. R cards and SR cards have a 30% activation rate, and UR cards have have a 33% activation rate. The next variable is the base skill activation rate, and this is the result of adding the original skill activation rate to all of the base skill activation rate modifiers that might be present. Variable number three is the live skill activation rate, and just like the base skill activation rate, this is the sum of all live skill activation rate modifiers. You might be wondering what the difference is between a base modifier and a live modifier. This is a concept you'll have to understand for a a lot of the mathematics going forward, so it's best we learn about it now. The main distinction is that base modifiers will include the word base in their description, and live modifiers do not include the word base in their description. There are a few modifiers that are considered base modifiers that don't include the word base in their description, but for those particular ones, I will explicitly point that out. Base modifiers are applied before the live show starts, and live modifiers are applied during the live show. That's why I I've given them the name live modifier, even though there isn't a canonical name in game for them. Finally, the last variable is called the live skill activation rate with skill type strategy effect. That's a bit verbose of a name. So usually for long variable names, there's an AKA followed by a shorter, more condensed version of the variable name that I will call it by. Since this is the final step, it is appropriately named final skill activation rate. And once you calculate the final skill activation rate, this is the number that the game uses to determine whether or not a card skill will activate when a card taps a note. So now let's actually talk about each step. The first step is to calculate the base skill activation rate. Since the original skill activation rate is a constant number, we don't really have to calculate that. We just have to know whether or not the card is a UR card or not, because UR cards have a 33% original skill activation rate, whereas the other cards have a 30% activation rate. The formula for the base skill activation rate consists of three parts. The first variable is the original skill activation rate of a card. The second variable is the contribution from the musical note keychain accessory, and we'll be talking about accessories in chapter 4, but since the musical note keychain specifically pertains to skill activation rate, we do have to discuss it a bit in this lecture. Finally, the last variable uses sum notation. We are taking the sum of all other base skill activation rate modifiers and then summing them together. Next, I want to briefly talk about all the different kinds of base skill activation rate modifiers. First off, our show abilities. If a show ability states that it increases the base skill activation rate, then it is a base modifier. Next, our insight skills. The insight skills with the blue corner that increase skill activation rate are base modifiers and are grouped in this category. There's also the song specialty, and the song you might be most familiar with that modifies the base skill activation rate is Genki Zenkai Day Day Day. That song has a negative 50% base skill activation rate modifier for non-natural attribute cards. 
There's also appeal chance effects. Appeal chance effects can either be positive or negative modifiers, but show specialties are only negative modifiers. The last base skill activation rate modifier to discuss is the musical note keychain accessory skill. There's a reason why we separated this from the rest of the base skill activation rate modifiers in our formula. The musical note keychain accessory skill is actually applied multiplicatively instead of additively like the other modifiers are. So instead of taking the 2.5% that the musical no keychain states it has in the description and then adding that to the original skill activation rate, you're instead taking 2.5% of the original skill activation rate and then adding that result to the original skill activation rate. I'm gonna take out a calculator and quickly show you the difference. If you were to apply 2.5% additively to 33%, it would just be 33 plus 2.5 and that would be 35.5%. On the other hand, if you were to apply 2.5% multiplicatively, this would result in a 33.82%. What this means is that the musical note keychain's effectiveness is actually weaker than all other base skill activation rate modifiers. Down here I list the steps required to calculate the musical note keychain accessory skill. Each keychain that is equipped on the strategy must be considered separately, and the final result is rounded down to two decimal points. Hopefully the mathematical formula shown here is clear enough of that. Next is the live skill activation rate, and this is just the sum of all live skill activation rate modifiers, which is then added to our previous result. It's possible to group the base skill activation rate modifiers with the live skill activation rate modifiers and then just add them all together in one step, but I feel that separating these steps makes it easier for you to understand the process that's going on, and for different game mechanics, it's not possible to actually group base modifiers and live modifiers together since they're applied different mathematically. It's just that skill activation rate is one of those mechanics that you can group them together because the game doesn't really distinguish between the two. The formula for live skill activation rate is more or less the same as base skill activation rate, but since we don't have to consider the musical note keychain, it's just the sum of all live skill activation rate modifiers. There's also a maximum skill activation rate that we have to consider. This was proposed by the Japanese blogger based on their testing. The maximum skill activation rate is 66%. So if our calculated life skill activation rate exceeds 66%, then that value gets brought down to 66%. Why exactly is 66% the maximum skill activation rate? The most logical conclusion is that 33% is the largest original skill activation rate and 100% of 33% becomes 66%. So instead of reaching 100% skill activation rate, what you're instead getting is 100% of the original skill activation rate, which is 66%. This is what makes those particular skill activation appeal chances a big hassle to deal with because even if you theoretically were to get 100% skill activation rate, the game's maximum value is only 66%, so there's always a chance that you can just fail the appeal chance because you're unlucky. Let's quickly go over all the different live skill activation rate modifiers. The most common one will be card skills. A lot of cards have skill activation rate increase in card skills. There's also show abilities, and again, in order to distinguish base skill activation rate modifiers and live skill activation rate modifiers, look for the keyword base, and if the word base isn't included in the skill description, then you know it's a live skill activation rate modifier. Inside skills with the red corner are live skill activation rate modifiers. The striped towel accessory skill is another live skill activation rate modifier. It's probably the accessory that has the least amount of use out of all of them, but it is still necessary to include it as part of the live skill activation rate modifiers, even if nobody uses them. There's also trick notes and appeal chance effects. Both trick notes and appeal chance effects can provide positive or negative modifiers to the life skill activation rate. The last step is to apply the skill type strategy effect modifier to the life skill activation rate. This is of course the value that is shown in the strategies accessory screen of your show formation. Look for the SK icon for that strategy and use the percentage that is associated with that particular strategy in question. If you want to calculate the strategy effect modifier manually, you can follow these steps and the formula presented below, but since the game calculates this for you automatically, and you can see the value of it in-game, there really isn't any need to calculate that value for yourself. I just have the steps and formula here for reference. Applying the skill type strategy effect modifier is actually pretty easy. All you do is multiply the skill type strategy effect modifier by the live skill activation rate, and then you round down the final result to two decimal points. 
Like the musical note keychain accessory skill, the skill type strategy effect modifier is applied multiplicatively, and the one good thing about the skill type strategy effect modifier is that it can exceed the 66% maximum live skill activation rate. So if your live skill activation rate was 66%, and you further apply a 15% skill type strategy effect modifier to that, you can get upwards to 75% skill activation rate. But this is the theoretical maximum you can achieve, which is still pretty far from a true 100% skill activation rate. If you're not too much of a mathematical person, then the only thing I suggest you remember for this particular lecture is that it is impossible to achieve a true 100% skill activation rate. Let's finish off this lecture with an example calculation. We can't actually verify our calculation in game because skill activation rate is a probability. Whether or not it activates doesn't actually tell us if we calculated the number correctly. However, we can do an example calculation that proves that a card has more than 0% skill activation rate. For this particular example, we'll be playing Genki Zenkai Day 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 on intermediate difficulty, which does have the negative 50% base skill activation rate modifier for non-natural attribute cards. And we're interested in calculating the final skill activation rate for this active attribute Umi on the green strategy. This strategy also has three musical note keychains that we'll be incorporating into our calculation. Since Umi is a UR card, it means her original skill activation rate is 33%. Next off, we have to consider all base skill activation rate modifiers except for the keychain and then sum those values together. For the particular song and show formation, there are four different base skill activation rate modifiers. Monica's passive insight skill provides a 0.5% increase. Both Nozomi and Maki's show ability provide a 1.7% base skill activation rate increase each. Finally, the show specialty of Genki Zenkai Day 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 is a negative 50% base skill activation rate. So when we sum up all these values together, we get a base skill activation rate of negative 46.1. Next are the musical note keychains, and all the keychains are at skill level 1, which means they have a maximum effectiveness of 2.5% when our remaining stamina is at 100% of the total stamina. However, at the moment we tap the note, our remaining stamina is only around 90% of the total stamina, so we have to scale down the effectiveness of the musical note keychain. This concept will be discussed more about in chapter 4 in tomorrow's lecture, but for now just know that since our remaining stamina is 90% of the total stamina of the show formation, the effectiveness is only 90% as effective. This results in each keychain providing a 2.25% increase. And as we mentioned earlier, the keychains are applied multiplicatively, so we have to take 33%, which is Umi's original skill activation rate, and multiply that by 2.25%. And once we round down that value, each keychain provides a 0.74% increase to Umi's base skill activation rate. Since there's three keychains on the strategy that Umi is on, that means we add the value 0.743 times, which gets us 2.22, and the final base skill activation rate is therefore 33% plus 2.22% minus 46.1%, which gets us negative 10.88%. Since this value is less than zero, it means that without anything else, Umi's card skill will never activate. But now we're going to consider the live skill activation rate modifiers, and at the moment that Umi taps the note, both Yoshiko's card skill and Riko's show ability have already activated and are currently in effect. That means Yoshiko provides a 26% increase to the live skill activation rate and Riko's show ability provides a 10% increase. Once we sum up these values and add it to the base skill activation rate of negative 10.88, we have a live skill activation rate of 25.12. Since this value is less than 66%, we can just use this value for our final step, which is applying the skill type strategy effect modifier to the live skill activation rate. 25.12 multiplied by 1.05 gets us a final skill activation rate of 26.37% once we round down to two decimal points. The final skill activation rate of 26.37% is greater than zero, which means that Umi's card skill can activate despite the show specialty of Genki Zenkai Day 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 lowering the base skill activation rate of non-natural attribute cards with enough skill activation rate modifiers, it was possible for our Umi's card skill to activate. Hopefully this example illustrates the process that the game uses to calculate the skill activation rate of a card. Again, this is a bit more of a mathematical lecture, so if a lot of the concepts fly over your head, don't 
sweat the details all too much. To summarize the important points of this lecture, most skill activation rate modifiers are applied additively, it's just the musical note keychain and the skill type strategy effect modifier that are applied multiplicatively. Also remember that there is an upper limit of skill activation rate, which is 66% before the strategy effect modifier is applied. That will conclude today's lecture, and that will also conclude chapter 3's discussion on skills. For your homework assignment, I would like you to try to replicate the experiment that I did on Genki Zenkai Day Day Day, where I activate a card skill that is not natural attribute. By using enough skill activation rate modifiers, it is possible to overcome the negative 50% base skill activation rate song specialty. Tomorrow, we're going to begin our lecture on chapter 4 which will focus on accessories. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.